I'm wondering how many people today, and uh, you know, just addressing this to those folks in the community who, you know, that we've got a group out there uh, that feels that they're morally superior to everyone else because they back all the what they call the right causes, which means it's it's a judgment on their part, but they they look at liberalism as a self evident truth, and these are the people who. They try to tell us that it's compassionate to bring boatloads of refugees here and dump them in our communities. I brought it up before on this program. They live behind gates. Most of the people who support these programs live in very well-to-do neighborhoods. And the only time they would ever have any interaction with a refugee might be at the grocery store or if they have the refugee over to cut the grass or come in and clean the house for them, or clean the pool, or do something along those lines. The same thing they do when, when they hire illegal workers from, uh, from other parts of the world to come do all of their, their odd jobs around their homes. And, you know, they pat themselves on the back and say they're doing everybody a favor. And if you complain you're just a white racist bigot, and that means that they have, uh, you know, that you deserve everything you get, the fact that you lost your job, whether it be, you know, in a coal mine or on a farm or wherever you happen to be working, uh, you're you're irrelevant to them. They would like you to go away. They just simply would like to get you out of the way. Uh, the liberals no longer have any compassion for the working people of America. Apparently all their compassion is reserved for people who, in some cases, mean us harm. And, and when they actually bring these people over here, and it's my tax dollars and your tax dollars that help support these people when they first come here and get resettled, and they end up living in... Well, let's be honest, hovels, they live in some of the worst homes in this community. We're paying the rent check, and the people who live behind the gated communities and say this is wonderful, they don't have any contact. In fact, they may own the hovel and may be taking your tax money and saying, oh boy, oh boy, oh boy, I'm glad I'm so good-hearted. And then you take a situation like yesterday in Columbus, Ohio, at Ohio State University, where you have a young man who... Well, he was given everything he could ever want. He was being given a free ride. He had a scholarship. Did you know that? I I read that this morning. A friend shared that with me. He had everything going for him in that sense. And his, his main complaint was he couldn't find a place to pray on campus. He was complaining to a campus newspaper a few weeks ago saying that if he prayed publicly, then people would think that he was going to get in a car and run over people and maybe stab them too. Well, he did do those things now, didn't he? Brian Kilmeade, one of the hosts at Fox and Friends, said this morning, you mean he couldn't go because Ohio State University is filled with places for Muslim students to pray. It's an enormous campus, so it has multiple sites. He could have gone to Google and done a three-second search and found several places to go pray. What he's doing, though, is bellyaching about the free ride he's been given in this country. He's been brought to a country of plenty, at least it still has plenty compared to what he probably knew when he lived in Somalia. So he came here, was resettled, was getting a free college education, probably living in a warmer place than he ever lived in before, even though it may not have been spectacular by any means, but compared to what he, what he knew in the, uh, the Horn of Africa, it was likely better than living out in the bush or in a mud hut or in some creaky old uh, shipping crate that he may have called home. And yet he still had to go out and attack people who have been generous to him. This is the thing. These people don't realize that the rest of us, whether we approve of the program or not, again, we're paying their freight. Now, what in blazes is wrong with the people who are supporting this program? And the first thing they're going to say is, well, Bill, you know, Dylan Roof was a white man. Yes, he was. Not much of a Christian, though. He didn't kill in the name of uh, of Jesus unlike some of these Islamic terrorists who are always killing in the name of Allah. Then they'll bring up Timothy McVeigh. Timothy McVeigh had been an altar boy in the Catholic Church until about the age of 11 or 12, and then he stopped going, and then he became an agnostic and, and, and eventually an atheist. So he didn't kill in the name of Jesus either. There are people who engage in aberrant behavior all over this planet. It happens. I mean, you pick up your local newspaper, you turn on, uh, tune on the radio, turn on the radio and you listen to the newscast. Turn on your television set and watch the newscast. And it's just, you're just saddened by so many of the terrible stories that we hear that take place all over, just not only the world, but the Magic Valley as well. And yet, 
It's like saying, well, last week, Bill, there were two traffic accidents in uh, Twin Falls involving white people. And just because we brought a bunch of refugees here and had four traffic accidents this week, you can't say they're responsible for them. No, but we could say that there are now more traffic accidents than there were a couple of weeks ago. I'm not talking in a, a literal sense there. I'm using that to make an analogy. What you're doing is you're adding to the mayhem that we're experiencing through this. And I noticed I must have touched a nerve yesterday when I posted at Facebook after the fellow had been identified as a Somali Muslim refugee. And sarcastically, I said, well, vetting process apparently works. And several people, that, that little one line that I uttered, several people ended up sharing that, including the syndicated columnist Cal Thomas. He's in 600 newspapers around the country. He's the most widely read newspaper columnist in the country. And he's a very decent human being. I've, I've had, had the chance a couple of times to speak to Cal Thomas in the past, not personally, but you know, we emailed back and forth on a couple of issues. And I actually heard him on a radio talk show one day in Washington. I was driving through on a mission with a dog rescue and happened to hear the show. And when I got home, I emailed him to tell him how much I appreciated some of the things he said. And he, we had a very nice back and forth for a couple of days. But I'm telling you, we have an opportunity here with the changing of the guard in Washington to maybe put the brakes on this program. Now, you've got to always qualify these things. You've always got to say, yes, but they're not all bad people. Because if you don't say that, they'll accuse you of being a racist and a bigot and an Islamophobe. That means you're, you're fearful, by the way, the last one there. Uh, that means you're fearful, and you should be. You really should be. The fact of the matter is, it doesn't necessarily have to be all of them who are coming here and creating mayhem. One 18-year-old yesterday shut down one of the largest universities in America. There are 65,000 students on the campus of Ohio State University. And they had to put it into lockdown. One person was the cause of all of that. And his mayhem may have lasted not longer than a couple of minutes. What are we thinking here? Meanwhile, Christians throughout the Middle East are being crucified. They're being burned alive. They're being drowned. They're being raped. They're being you know, killed in all manner of just devious ways by this ISIS organization. And yet we don't bring them here. I'm telling you, we used to have immigration to this country, mainly from Europe. And the people would come here, and they would settle in very nicely. And they, they, they would adjust to the culture very quickly. Actually, Hindus have adjusted well to U.S. culture. Two of my best friends from college were Hindu. Um, you've, got, uh, you've got people from uh, China, Japan, who adjusted well in large groups to coming to this country. You've got Jews who settled here and adjusted very, very well. It's just one, one group. And they are known as Muslims that have difficulty coming here and settling. And again, not all of them. But once more, it just takes one 18-year-old nitwit to bring a campus that is really a city in its own to its knees. 815, Bill Colley with you on Top Story on News Radio 1310, KLIX and News Radio 1310.com. We're at 28. Telephone number, if you'd like to reach our program today, 736-0300. That's 736-0300. A writer by the name of Steve Berman at the uh, theresurgent.com says, The left is sad that the OSU attacker was an observant Muslim. Yeah, you know, they, they were originally saying, well, it had to be, uh, a, you know, gun crime. Senator Tim Kaine, remember him? He was the Roman Catholic who ran as the vice presidential candidate for the Democrat Party. Uh, he used to be opposed to abortion, but then when he realized it was a hindrance to his political ambitions, he was all for it. He tweeted this out right after he got the news. Deeply saddened by the senseless act of gun violence at Ohio State this morning, praying for the injured in the entire Buckeye community. Of course, if you're a conservative and say you're praying on Twitter, uh, you get shamed by the American left. But if you're a fellow traveler like Senator Kane, then you can pray albeit to a God you no longer follow because of your abortion stance. And then he had to retweet, uh, or send another tweet out, that is. Updated reports say attacker 
used a vehicle and knife, horrifying and senseless. Relieved the scene is secure and praying for victims' recovery. And then somebody at the National Rifle Association replied, sad when politicians rush to a narrative that fits their own agenda instead of waiting for the facts. The writer, Mr. Berman, says CNN reported that the, the Somali was living legally in the U.S. as a permanent resident. Uh, resident. He says, to me, that means he wasn't a citizen, which indicates he wasn't born here. We could therefore say CNN reported that Artan, that is his name, is a Somali immigrant. The mainstream media would rather report on a rifle-toting white man wearing a Make America Great Again ball cap than a Somali teen with a butcher knife. They really would, he writes. Then they could take up the cudgel and bash those of us who are friendly to the NRA with do something. Or they could break out a new round of Trump swastika fever, but now they're left with an attack, possibly a terror attack, inspired by Islamic terrorists by a young man who wasted his life to kill others. We who aren't disappointed by who did the killing are sad because it happened. But those in the media who are sadder because of the color, religion, and probable motive of the killer never learn from the past. And when you say media, you you know, I know it's redundant to say Democrat. Um, It's the same thing. They're all liberals. I think we're we're well-schooled in all of that. But it, it, it shows you the mindset that we are up against. This is the mindset that put Donald Trump in the White House because people are finally fed up with it. And now that the election is over, there seems to be even more people gravitating to Trump's message. And I would believe that if he sticks to it, over the next four years, his numbers will only grow. And the pushback that we've been waiting for against these, I said it in my pregame warm-up on Facebook this morning, my Facebook video before the show. We're on the cusp of civil war between liberals and conservatives in this country. And since your local liberal looks at a gun case and shakes at the knees just by looking at a firearm on display, if there was a war in the streets, the liberals wouldn't last very long. And I know there are people in this audience who say, yeah, whatever, bring it on. But I don't want to lose tens of millions of my countrymen. I just want them to stop being stupid. And maybe what we need to do is impress upon them that this thing that happened yesterday is not some one-off random attack but that there will be many more of these coming because we've seen them in the past. And the other side, the people who are behind all of this halfway around the world are going to encourage it more and more and more with every attack. We've got a short break coming up. Bill Colley with you on Top Story this morning on News Radio 1310, KLIX and News 1310.com. We're at 29. Steve Millington will be joining us as well this morning. He's the chairman of the Twin Falls County Republican Party. Got a lot to talk about this morning. Also, uh, uh, Donald Trump is apparently annoying college campuses across the country who are now planning to subvert the law any means they can in order to give illegal immigrants free education. Well, of course, your kids, you can't afford to send them, but hey, you know, that's your reparations check. More on the way with Bill Colley on KLIX. Before I get to the telephones, uh, just a quick note. I do want to remind people, um, and I was mentioning what happened at Ohio State University yesterday, but it does have, obviously, some relation to what's been going on in this community over the last couple of years, really over the last 20 years, but I think that we're in a, we're in a whole new era now with the Internet age and people can be motivated by what they, they see online. Uh, just a quick note. Tomorrow morning, if you have a, an ailment, and there's two people in this studio right now suffering the uh, after effects of colds, but uh, tomorrow morning, Dr. Jonathan Tripp is in studio with us, or one of his associates from Tripp Family Medicine, between 8.30 and 9 o'clock. And, of course, Dr. Tripp or the associate will take your telephone calls as well. Keep in mind, his office can see you generally on the same day if you're a patient and he's still looking for same patients. We need to remind you that Tripp Family Medicine is located on Fillmore Street in Twin Falls, directly across from the main post office. And remember, life's too short not to feel good. Caller, you're on the air. I hope you are patient. Go ahead. Hey, thanks. I just wanted to give a heads up to everybody traveling on Kimberly Road out to the uh, east that is extremely slick, even though and it's misleading. Uh, the scene a guy pull out in front of a semi, and he's probably changing his shorts right now. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Yeah, the, 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 the granular nature of what we saw this morning with the, uh, the snow, it wasn't thick, but it just came down and coated everything, and then it got cold, and boom, and you get that ice skating rink out there. We'll squeeze another caller in here. Caller, you're up next. You're on the air on KLIX at 824. Go ahead. Uh, good morning, Bill. Yeah, that, 
people need to wish, wake up to the fact that we always hear about the Islam religion, but it's really a theocracy. And the theocracy is that to conquest the world. It's been going on for over 1,400 years. And those that get radicalized really just uh, obey and the commandments of the Quran. And so there's nothing mysterious about it, but people just, so many are in denial about what Islam is and uh, what it represents. But there's been a war against the world. I mean, as recent as the Armenians were just about totally wiped out in the early 19, about 100 years ago. Sure, I have some cousins who are uh, of Armenian stock. And it's just been going on even since... uh, the pilgrims, uh, William Bradford indicated Muslim uh, ship, hi- well, Muslims shipped, uh, hijacked a pilgrim ship that was loaded with beaver pelts to uh, trade with supplies in England. And the captain and crew were taken to Morocco where they were made slaves. And so this has been going on. And then, of course, you realize uh, in, um, it was uh, Jefferson, the barbaric pirates, had uh, been uh, extorting money from us uh, in order to carry out any kind of shipping uh, after the French um, protection had disappeared. And finally, he sent over or the Navy with the high collars, the leathernecks. Well, Adrian, here's a question for you. I mean, let's, I think a lot of us are familiar with the history, but will we see a change with the new administration? Because I was sitting there watching... John Kasich on TV yesterday, and remember, despite the fact that he's not a close friend of Donald Trump, Kasich was, I think, the first governor in America who said, this program has to at least be, we have to have a moratorium, put a pause on it for now, and then within a day he was followed by uh, by the, the, the next vice president, uh, Mike Pence, as well as Butch Otter. And so you've had these people say we need a change. Nothing has happened, though, because the guy in the White House won't do it. Do you... Do you really believe that Trump is going to carry through on this? I, I really do. I think there's a lot of pressure. I think this is one of the main things besides building the, the wall um, that people are concerned about. Uh, there's 190-some communities in the nation that are like Twin Falls. They're all very conservative communities. It's interesting they're putting these refugees into not into the big cities. You don't see them happening there very much, but... You do see him spreading them out. So it seems to be a plan to bring these people in here. So there has been, you know, Article 4, Section 4 is to Congress prevent, pro- protect us against invasion. We've been invading almost 99% of all of the immigrants coming in this country in the last um, decade or more have been Muslims. And so the goal is to, you know, of course, they have eight, ten kids, and so it's just population jihad or terrorist jihad like we saw yesterday. I thank you much for the telephone call. And uh, I, I think that if nothing else, it's got to increase our vigilance. But I read today where there's a poll out that says most voters believe Donald Trump is going to keep his promises. Steve Millington uh, joins us in studio, chairman of the Twin Falls County Republican Party. Uh, and Trump is looking now after the election more and more conservative than even the conservatives thought he would be. I, I think... Uh... You know, one, we read lots of articles, and there's lots of, of post-mortems, if you will, post-election analyses that it's starting to show up, and, and they're saying, how did he do this? How did he do this? And, and without exception, he played an extremely careful, well-orchestrated election and, and, uh, and, and sang exactly the words to the music that everyone wanted. And, and now we're seeing him turn just a little bit more conservative. Uh, Especially in cabinet choices. Yes, uh, and, and, and that's what, uh, it, yeah, we were seeing that conservative conservatism show up in his choice of cabinet people. And, and I think uh, uh, this uh, Price, uh, Tom Price. From for, Georgia. Yeah, right, Georgia's uh, congressman, um, Health and Human Services. Um he has been an outspoken critic of Obamacare from day one, from day one. So we've got somebody who, uh, and is a, he's a physician, I believe, orthopedic surgeon. So, you know, maybe we can get some people in there who will get this thing turned around. And, and this uh, Betsy DeVos yeah. over education, 
Um, no, she was criticized once she supported Common Core, but she's set, she's changed her mind now, too. Yep, so. she, it, it only works if the federal government gets out of it and leave it up to the states. we got more with Steve Millington coming up in just a couple of minutes. It's 8.30, 29 right now. Bill Colley with you as well on Top Story on News Radio 1310, KLIX, and NewsRadio1310.com.